right, what's up traders? Thanks for checking out my weekly recap video and seeing what I was sitting around in my underwear looking at this week. So uh, on Tuesday, I was watching TTPH or Tetraphase Pharmaceuticals in the morning and this thing had gapped up and then was kind of, you know, crapping itself uh, pre-market. And I thought, okay, this is probably something I want to, I really, I think I was looking to play it for a bounce, quite honestly. Kind of held down here on this 840, and then it started making uh, this move back up towards VWAP. And the bell rings, and it just shits on itself, of course. And I'm like, okay, well, that's out for a long. And I saw these couple of candles here, and then when it started to try to make this move back up and then it touched that moving average and came back down it was like I think it was around 833 834 uh, and I thought man I should just you know jump in on the on the bid and short this thing and I didn't and of course I was instantly pissed off at myself because it made this move here and then it just continued to wash down and you might be like, yeah, big deal, so what? Well, this thing touched 870, and it bottomed out at 740. So let's say I had gotten in here around 830, and then made the made the move down. This is a kind of move where you literally can just follow the stock down with your stop loss, keeping it above like the previous candles, and you really aren't in much risk of getting stopped out. Now with a move that's nearly a point, in this case it's actually over a point, you would expect a somewhat significant pullback to happen. So well, let's say, again, let's say I got in around 830 and then it would have come down here to around 760 and then this little hammer candle right here forms. I, I would expect, yeah, okay, there's going to be a pullback here. Let me run a fib here. So if we actually retrace this move, so from here, do it over here. So from here up to where it originated, I would expect a move like this to pull back to probably at least the 618 area. And this didn't even get that far, right? This got about halfway between there, so it probably got to around 70, maybe 0.7-ish, which tells me that, hey, there's going to be another leg down that I would look for the stock to move. And of course it did. So I don't, I don't know if I would have, I'd have probably just taken it off, honestly, for 75 cents a share. I probably would have gotten out, but um, comes back, and then it makes a move down again, and it, and it makes a little more progress, so it gets down here to 740. But once I see that it gets back up and it gets through the threshold that it couldn't get through earlier, right? So that was support for the stock earlier, so that's going to be support if it gets back up above it. Once it got above it, I would definitely get out. So I ultimately would get out around the same area there. But that's a matter of, what, 10 minutes there? Yeah, that's 11 minutes. Uh, and potentially, let's say that, you know, for me, I would have only had about 300 shares, but I could have made a good $200 there. So that was a little bit upsetting. On Thursday, we had the big uh, tech crunch. And... All of the, not all, but um, some of the big tech sector stock names took a real big hit, which I kind of thought was interesting. So I have started paper trading options because I really, I like day trading, but for the same amount of capital investment, I can play bigger name stocks. So for example, I could never day trade NVIDIA because I don't have... $170 a share to risk, right? But with options, you can. I think I think the options that I've got a paper trade on, I had only invested $60 on like a 150 put, which is what people basically call like a lottery ticket. So basically, if you're not familiar with options, that just means that I thought the stock was going to move down, not necessarily all the way down to 150, but the price that I was looking at was 150 and I thought, okay, if it comes down, I'll be able to make a few bucks. And then we had this big red day and I thought, okay, great. So I went ahead and cashed that out and I know I think, I think it was like a $60 win, but I had also put a limit order in 
to buy a call when it got down around this 163.4 level. So you can see that's where I've got this mark. And I've actually got a 177.50 call in play right now because I expect this to bounce. So I'll be interested to see if this makes it back up to the top of this channel. And I, and I want to hold it through earnings because I want to see what happens to the option. So I, I don't recommend getting into options if you aren't familiar with them. And if you're looking to make small account trades, it's something that you need to really research and, and probably put some money into a formal training uh, education package on. Because if you don't know what you're doing, you can actually lose a lot of money playing with options. So I was kind of watching the tech stocks. And then on Friday... Sorry, the serious trade was on Thursday. So this thing made this big move up uh, first thing in the morning, and it came up on whatever scanner I had up on TOS at the time, and I thought, oh, hey, let me, let me check that out. So it made a pretty sizable move here, right? This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine green candles. So for nine straight minutes, the stock was just going up and up and up and up and up, right? So I thought, man, that's a pretty strong move, even though it's not a lot of money. Opening candle, uh, the low where it opened was 555, and it ran up to 587. So not a lot of money, right? We're only talking about 30 some cents. But the fact that you had so many green candles in a row, you should expect a pretty sizable pullback coming. Also, you got this hanging man candle. That's generally a sign that the stock could be making a move in the other direction. So I thought, okay, let me run a fib on this thing and look for a good uh, entry point because I expected it to pull back and then make and then bounce and make a run up again to that same level. So, like I always do, from the high of the move to the low of the opening candle is where we draw our fib retracement. And the 50% mark is 571. So I set a limit order to buy at 571. And let me tell you, I was very pleased with the entry, right? Because, it, I mean, it only went two cents past me, but watching these candles form is, it's kind of scary. You know, that's like a, that's like a panic sell off that's happening right there. It's scary to get in when this is happening. So it, it's, it doesn't, I'm not going to say it takes, you know, nerves of steel or anything, but for me to watch the price come down, I feel like it's just going to keep going past. So it's going to get me into the stock and then it's going to stop me out. But it didn't, obviously in this case, it, so I got in 500 shares at 571. And again, I was looking for a move back up here to around the 590 mark or maybe higher. So you see the 1272 area, which is generally a profit target that I like to use, was right below six bucks. I kind of had two price points in mind to take profit. So my, my stop loss, I had it down here under the 50 EMA. And again, profit target. I was really just looking for it to get back up here. I figured, hey, if it makes 15 cents on 500 shares, that's 75 bucks. I'd be happy with that. I set a range order, which is just basically one order that you can put in your stop and also a profit target. So put my low down here around 563 and then the high range price I put at 587. And what that does, or 586, excuse me, one cent below the previous high that it made. So what that range order does, it will sell your position or exit you from the stock trade if it either A, goes against you and hits your stop, or B, it'll, it'll take you out when it reaches the, the profit target. And what that does is, is not only reduces your potential loss, right? You've got a fixed amount of loss with the stop, but it also eliminates you from getting greedy and missing out on profits. So imagine... The stock's moving up here, moving up, and it's like, okay, cool. It made it over 575. Well, before this candle forms, let's say you're like, oh man, this thing's definitely going to go higher. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take my, uh, my profit target off, and then this starts happening. So then you're like, oh shit, okay, well, do you we know what I need to do with my stop? And you start monkeying with your original trade plan, and that's what you don't want to do, right? Especially as, as a newer trader with a small account. You need to have a trade plan before you press the buy or sell button to execute either your long or short position trade. So I put that in and I, and I let it run. I kind of went about my business in the morning, just watching the stock a little bit, getting ready for work and stuff. And it really was just kind of consolidating for the most part here. Got up to 578, 
dip back down below my entry position a little bit, bounced off to 50 EMA, and then it started kind of making a move back up. I think I actually wasn't in the room when, when uh, this little doji hit, but I kind of got worried as it started to trickle back down that it was not going to get up to this 587 area. So I just got out when it got up to, I think it was like 576. I took a nickel. It gave me, I don't know, maybe like 12 bucks on the trade or something like that after commissions. But wouldn't you know, I don't know, however long later, the damn thing ran right back up to that same level, 589. So I could have made the, the amount of profit that I was looking for with that range order that I had entered. And I actually, I don't know if it got any higher. Yeah, see, and that was the peak of the day. So just kind of interesting. I, I'm a little mad at myself that I, that I second-guessed my trade plan when I shouldn't have done that. But I guess that's kind of what happened. So that was it for me this week. I... Friday, I didn't even trade anything. There was not a lot of action Friday, and what I did see was a lot of red day type action, and it was on stocks that were $30 and above. So obviously I can't get more than 100 shares on those stocks, and I'm looking more for those quick momentum plays where I can take several hundred shares. So not much for me. Maybe next week we'll hold, uh, hold something more. But I will see you guys in the next recap. If you got any questions, as always, drop them below. I do like interacting with all of you. Thanks. Yeah, I like to keep it mellow. I smoke and keep it mellow. I drink and keep it mellow. Every day I keep it mellow.